All right, so we have Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster Review. This is GameSpot's re uh, review for the game. Let's go to video. As a teenager, in 2006, I spent several months teenager to buy an Xbox 360, and even more than yo, Tom, you are you're old. The next gen Madden. There was one game that motivated me to get the console for I was, myself. Bro, I was Capcom's a baby in 2006. Nearly 20 years since then, it's been fun to discover that it still holds up as an endearing open world zombie game that undoubtedly has its flaws. That's very dangerous. Jumping on a helicopter is very dangerous. In essence, Dead Rising is a darkly comedic take on Romero's Dawn of the Dead. It's focused on a zombie outbreak that begins in a mall in Willamette, Colorado. Photojournalist Frank the craziest Rost, mall of all time. investigator whom you can nonetheless dress up in a significant number of absurd costumes arrives to look into the matter <laughs> and gets trapped in the mall with dozens of other human survivors. Yeah. Surrounded by hordes of the undead whenever he steps out of the safe room, his mission is to determine the cause of the zombie plague, survive the outbreak until rescue arrives, and save as many others as he can. Bro, Frank built like a linebacker. following a mission marker towards signs of commotion, where Frank might find a survivor or several hold up in look the Michael Jordan. store or supermarket. Sometimes you'll come upon desperate survivors merely by chance or through exploration. The game won't tell you of their whereabouts. Oh, he was so irritating. Walk, but you might hear oh my God, this is the other reporter. Half with the katana at the faux Starbucks. In any case, Frank will need to escort them back to the safe room, leading to frustration as the uh -oh. NPCs make for unreliable escort missions. They're bad at finding a path through the undead and tend to get grabbed or slashed. Thankfully, they're horrible. They arm and heal them along the way, but a limited inventory system means you'll often juggle bringing what you need to lead the pack and what the pack needs to follow you toward their salvation. Though the game offers several welcome fixes to be discussed later in this review, the survivability of NPC allies is not among uh oh the prisoners oh my goodness gracious look at bro look at these menaces and the guy had like a machine gun at the back look at him this mall he's babysitting dead rising's tone is constantly shifting some missions play out with the seriousness of a murder charge while others unfold with spin kicks and cheesy dialogue look at this crackhead manager bro my store look he was, bro. He was like the. He was like the. <laughs> which led he was a crab. <laughs> reward you for taking dramatic and horrific photos. He was the Mr. Krabs of the game. Pictures too. <laughs> Ultimately, this blend of tones comes out of the wash as something closer <laughs> to the absurd, even when it's hinting its seriousness. Dead Ooh. Rising is ridiculous. Hi. And it's better for it. This is never more evident than it is with the game's many. Oh my God! The clown. Each of them is found in different parts of the mall at different times throughout the story, and they tend to personify some element of United States culture. Bro, look at this clown, bro. Gone through these overacted caricatures of people, even when the real life issues may be much more deserving of solemnity. A family of hunters who turn their attention to human targets hits on America's uniquely problematic gun culture. A power tripping cop takes hostages in a woman's clothing store, abusing the victims in a strange funhouse mirror reflection of real life issues. None of these characters say anything meaningful in the end, though it also doesn't feel like the studio has missed its intended mark. They all feel like cartoonish displays of America's worst attributes, and that's oh. all. Any commentary anyone wishes to add to them feels so. What like is that guy supposed to be? Names, text, or subtext. One could contribute thousands of words on this design decision and any good or harm it may do, but ultimately, it feels like Capcom well, is about to sacrifice somebody. Stream, so why bother? I find them neither offensive nor insightful. In some cases, I'm sure they'd be handled differently today, but I mainly just find them loud and silly. I mean, but that's the game, though. <laughs> For my taste, achieving this is more pain than pleasure, given some of the game's yet to be mentioned flaws. Though here in this remaster, I found I don't mind the timer it itself as much as I used to. Essentially, the game is constantly aware of its day night cycle. Hours don't tick by in real time, but they do tick by at a rate consistent in its world, so you can reliably plan ahead as Ooh, man, that's moves funny. through the hordes and missions slowly evaporate off Frankie. the quest log forever. 
if you don't complete them in time. Secret shortcuts can be found, and vehicles Whee! as poor as their controls still feel 18 years later. Frank, do a kickflip. Across the expansive courtyard between more sections. There's ultimately one optimal, rigid path through the 12 hour game that will allow you to make excellent use of your time so you can see and do everything, and finding it was once a communal effort. Today, these answers are widely available online since the internet optimized all of this nearly 20 years ago. Dead Rising has an uncommon crowdsourcing aspect to it, which makes it a fascinating game despite its faults. You have to know when to look for the survivors you're not warned about. You learn via comment sections on GameFAQs threads that would be old enough to drive, Wait. when you should bring a train of NPCs with you to some other section of the mall to grab an important But that's the beauty of them though, like... Need a survivor stashed in your safe room. I think that's or the beauty of it. Line it for the safe room because a powerful trio of bosses roaming in the Humvee will soon spawn in the courtyard, and they'll almost surely run over your allies if you give them the chance. <laughs> you can learn True. these things on your own, but you'll probably learn them the hard way. All of this also... The thing is, and usually I don't really pause, so my bad, but usually, like, when we play, like, a lot of games back then, when I say back then, all right, I'm not old, okay? I'm not an old head. But, um... But, like, whenever, like, we play, like, a lot of games back then, bro, we didn't have, like, the, like, the tutorials or... The YouTube videos and stuff like that. Like, bro, it was just purely just based off of just what you know. Like, it wasn't like, okay, let me look on the internet on, okay, how to do this or whatever. Or uh, Easter eggs for this game. It was plainly just, okay, if you can't beat this boss, if you don't know the Easter eggs for this, you have to figure it out on your own. And sometimes, bro, that took days. Like, bro, you don't know how many games that I play, bro. And, like, I was stuck on one boss. Bro, it was that level of, like... Like, it, it was, but it was, like, fun in a way. You get what I'm saying? Like, it, it was, I hated it because I'm like, bro, I lost to this boss a thousand times or I can't, you know, figure out this puzzle. But then once you click, like, once you, like, you know, figure out the puzzle, whatever, then you're like, oh, okay, well, like, it, it makes you feel good about yourself a little bit because you're like, oh, snap, I accept, like, I did this hard puzzle or whatever, or I beat this hard boss or whatever. It's not like, okay, well, like, I'm going to just look it up on YouTube and then, oh, okay, I found it. But, like, sometimes, though, and, and, and that's not a bad way either. I'm just saying, like, it, it, whenever you did find the thing that you wanted to find or whatever you, you did beat the boss that you wanted to beat, it always felt good. But also, like, you know, later down the line, you know, in 2024, if you ever want to go play, like, an old game and you wanted to know, like, different ways to beat this boss or, like, different, um, or, like, different ways to, like, get to, like, this mission or whatever or, or whatever, you can just look it up now because, you know, we have, the, we have YouTube, so. Eyes into the game's which is technically optional, but likely to be used at least once or twice in any playthrough. Whenever Frank dies, you can elect to reload your last save or start- Ew, ew, look at that creature. Keeping his level and skills intact. Yeah, smack it or something. Frank is slow, devoid of helpful attack moves, and has little in the way of health or inventory space, making some missions extremely difficult to beat on a single run. It can be done, but your best bet is to reset the story with a sturdier Frank. That's true for a standard run in which you'd like to just beat the game, but yeah, it's choke him out, Frank. seeking the flawless playthrough. Sometimes, force multiplying these frustrations are its uneven combat systems. On one hand, being left in a mall in which virtually everything is a weapon is such an awesome video game premise. True. Similarly, you can heal with an impressive number of food items like whole pies and two-foot baguettes, all of which Frank consumes baguettes. in swift, cartoonish gulps a la Scooby-Doo. Many of the, the Scooby Doo. Even some of its flaws ultimately make Dead Rising special. The world is consistent. It is, bro. This game is. Oh my gosh. Oh. And sounds and its gameplay woes often fall by the wayside as a result. That's truer in the deluxe. This man, he's wearing Daisy before, Dukes right now, bro. The total package of Dead Rising has aged to be a worse game than it was in 2006. This is also clearly, and perhaps paradoxically, the best version of the game. Several yeah. quality of life changes yeah. have provided the conveniences that the open world genre normally affords players. A compass at the top of the screen now helpfully points you toward the optimal route, even adjusting to reflect optional shortcuts once you've unlocked them. Meters inform you of a weapon's remaining durability, removing the guessing game from the mechanic like the original had. Arguably, the most important aspect is the ability to advance time, which allows you to speed up those smaller chunks of time between when you've done all you want to, and when the next main missions unlock in the game's universal timer. 
My favorite of the game's changes, however, is so simple and yet so welcome. Before, if you didn't go to a restroom to save your game and then you died, you'd lose everything you've done since your last save. Yeah. Because saving took you off the path you were on at times, this also ate into your available time. It was like that in a lot of games now too the back game then. saves whenever you transition from one section of the world to another, like when you exit the safe room or move from the North Plaza to the supermarket, keeping you on track and being much less punishing if you fail to save for a while. All of these new elements make the game clearly better than the original version, which I'd say is also true of the visual overhaul. Moving to Capcom's proprietary RE engine, DRDR adopts newer Resident Evil I wouldn't say clearly better, tone, but okay. which I'll give it to the game's overall color palette in a way that may have some video game preservationists up in arms. Ooh. I don't mind it though as it's ultimately pretty subtle unless you compare the versions side by side and notice some blue hues swapped for shades of tan. Along with that, the modern conveniences like much better textures Bro, look at, look and at that manager. facial animations mean the game He was a tweaker. Clean up. Register six. <sighs> Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster is a better version of a classic flawed game. Those blemishes are sometimes more glaring today, but some great fixes to the overall package also erase some other issues entirely. Its timeless qualities, like an absurd story and a fun setting, keep it from feeling like an unwelcome retread. Uh -oh. Still, I'd hope the next Dead Rising fixes a lot of what this one does poorly, and even some of its sequels did that, so it seems likely. In 2024, Dead Rising is no longer the sort of game that would make me run out and buy a new console, but it of course, is a yeah, game of course. that I'm happy to revisit in its improved form. Seven? Here's the thing. At the end of the day, I mean, it, it's not, listen, it's a remaster. So whenever, let me tell you something. Whenever a classic game like Dead Rising has a remaster, bro, or just like Dead Space, when, when, whenever Dead Space had a, uh, I'm pretty sure Dead Mace, I said Dead Mace, I'm pretty sure Dead Space was a remaster as well. I think that dropped, did it drop last year? I think it dropped early last year of 2023. Let me explain something to you, right? At the end of the day, whenever these old, like older games have remasters, bro, it's not like I don't take them seriously. It's like, you know what? Like, let me just play this remaster because I enjoyed this game so much when I was younger. And I still like this game. And, like, now obviously looks way better and stuff like that. So let me just play it again, you know, just to play it. And, like, I'm, like, I'm going to have fun playing it because it's a game that I enjoyed back then. At the end of the day, I don't really take remasters seriously. Not in a bad way saying that, oh, well, they didn't do this right. They didn't do this right. Like, no. Like, it's a game that I've already played before. But I'm just playing it now because it looks way better because obviously they upgraded the graphics, you know, which is a remaster. They remastered the entire thing, which is most of most of everything is still the same. Um, they did. I mean, they might change like a few things, whatever. Like, it's not like a it's not like a remake. Like a remake is literally it's it's, it's a remake. So they they re, they literally remade um, like everything like like graphics wise. They might switch up some lines. They might add in a few things like a few more scenes, whatever. It's a remake. A remaster, bro, it's, a comp it's literally like a, uh, it's not a copy and paste. It, it's, it's the same game, but it looks way better. And yeah, they might change up a few things, but if like a few small things. They're not going to change like any of like the scenes or whatever. They might change like a few lines or whatever. They might change the UI. But uh, in, in terms of just like remaster and remake, um, like bro, remasters, I don't really, I don't really, um, you know, judge them too much, you know, because they're, bro, they're remasters, you know, they're remastered to a game that I've already uh enjoyed and played you know so this is why i don't really um I, I don't really like you know uh be so quick to judge and be so harsh on like my judgment whenever it comes to these uh remastered games and um bro like i said i, bro, I remember playing xbox 360 dead rising bro uh i think bro it, it was man i still remember playing this game and it's crazy that we actually got a remastered right now in 2024 um, and bro, I was, bro, I was, a, I was a baby then, bro. It, it was, that was crazy, bro. On an Xbox 360. Now this game, um, looks really good. The game does look really good though. It looks really good. Um, whenever the guy said that this is like, like a, this is like, you know, like the, like the better version or whatever. Um, technically it is, you know, obviously graphics, it, it looks way better than the original. Um, but I just think that when we were younger, we didn't have like, I, I the reason I said kind of whenever he said this is like the best version was because when I first played this game back then, yeah, it looked good, but it wasn't like the most graphic, like appealing or whatever. Like, but at the same time, when I was younger, I didn't care about graphics. I truly, bro, when I was younger, bro, I played, I played a lot of Nintendo 64 games, bro. 
bro, like, bom did you see Bomberman's head, bro? Like, it, bro, his head was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> so, I, bro, I really didn't care about graphics, bro. I used to play on the, on the Nintendo, uh, Nintendo 64. That console's older than me. The Nintendo 64 is older than me, bro. Like, and I used to play some of their games. I never cared about um, graphics at all. But as I got older, and bro, I got hit with GTA 5. I got hit with, um, with, um, uh, um, 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 bro, what are some other games? Bro, I know so many games. Like, you ever, like, know so many games, but you, like, you just can't name one? Like, if somebody comes up to you and they say, oh, name three games. Like, you, like, you ever know so many games that, like, wait a minute, like, it's, it's kind of hard for you to, like, talk a little bit? Like, for me, um, oh, my God, what else? Uh, Until Dawn. That was huge. Bro, seeing Until Dawn. Bro, that broke, like, seeing, like, uh, GTA, like, GTA 5, bro, graphically, I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, but like, the graphics are crazy, and I, like, at the time, like, we've never seen, like, a game like that before, like, like, the graphical, like, oh, my goodness, and then we get hit with, like, Batman Arkham Knight, oh, my goodness, that, bro, that game was ahead of its time in my book, but okay, um, what else, uh, like I said, Until Dawn, um, 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 Bro, what else? Oh my God, there's so many. I play so many games. Uh, Detroit Become Human. Uh, I, bro, there's so many good games out there, bro. That like that have like exceeded. Oh, God of War. That have like exceeded like like expectations whenever it comes to graphics. That like I've just like just grown up to it. I've never really had any like graphical uh graphical point to where I'm like, okay, oh cool, this game is nice and all, but. I won't be playing it because uh, the graphics aren't at this point. Like, bro, I never had that before. I just played the games, and the games look really good. Like, it's so easy for us to look back and be like, oh, okay, well, this is way better than Dead Rising, the original one. I mean, well, back then, bro, like, the graphics, like, bro, I think the, like, Dead Rising came out, what, 2006, what, 2007? Yeah, like, bro, like, the graphics weren't even, like, they were good, but, like, bro, they weren't as good as now, you know? So we can't really be like, I mean, we can because it's our opinion, but, like, we can't really just be like, oh, well, this game is just way better than the original. I, like, bro, I think the original was just, I think the original, here's the thing. I think the original for most things can never be, can never be, not can never be beaten, but they can never be, Um. I don't know. It was just fresh. Like, I, I, I'm trying to explain it in a way to the point to where, like, I hope you guys know what I'm saying. Like, like NFL Street, like, bro, oh, man. <sighs> NFL Street, bro, I feel like NFL Street 2 was nice. It was really nice, bro, especially when you had, like, Randy Moss jumping off the walls and stuff like that, like, uh, like wall catching and stuff. That was amazing, bro, but, like, NFL Street will never be replaced. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's it was the number one. It was the first one. So, like, hopefully you get what I'm saying, but, like, I just feel like the original of, like, all these remasters and stuff like that, like, it, it's legendary, but like, like, there's nothing that can like replace it. If that makes sense. But comment down below, man. What do you think about IGN's um, uh, uh, review to this uh, Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster? I'm just call it Dead Rising Remaster. Um, other than that, man, make sure you guys comment down below what you guys think. See you guys next time, and.